Hang on a minute. Right. Well, it's uh, six o'clock UTC. I'm uh, hoping everyone can hear me. He says that the mic. <laughs> That's a life sentence. You're not far off the truth. Uh, can I just check that you can hear me? Open. Yeah, this is not going to be straight forward, Ken. Yep, settle down, mate. Uh, ah, it's a bit choppy. Mm. Uh, not much I can do this end, I don't think. Anyway, we'll give it a we'll give it a go and see how we get on. Right. Um. Okay, so this is uh. Very much just an idea at the moment. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm hoping you guys can give me suggestions on uh, what uh, to make of this stream. But the idea is uh, to just do a a friendly environment stream uh, where you guys ask questions and we will work through the amp um of live on screen uh now obviously one of the big problems we've got is uh you will all be different places in your devops trajectory um so one of the ways i want to address that is as follows if you see something or hear something on the stream uh, and you feel that it's like too high a level or too simple for you, please speak up uh, and say, because we can always sort of increase the difficulty or decrease the difficulty level as we go along. Um, if there are enough people that say, you know, like, like let's say, for example, we're talking about um, uh, containers and we're talking about Docker and we start getting into the weeds with the network. Uh, and you kind of feel completely at your depth with networking topics, um, then I'm perfectly happy to sort of take that as a note and have another stream, which is just introducing the network. Uh, conversely, uh, you know, if I'm talking about some very simplistic, uh, assuming it's not a, a sort of beginner's level stream, then uh, you know, I can I can always sort of skip that and assume that you know more. That's the first thing, um, and it really is very much up to you guys to sort of put your hands up and say, uh, "Oh, you, you're too low a level or you're too higher level for this particular." Okay, um, what I want to do uh, is just do a very quick set of slides to set out 
where I am uh, with regards to DevOps, um, what I think it is. Uh, because one of the principal problems that you come across, particularly if you spend any time on the internet, is everyone seems to have their own definition of what DevOps is. Everyone seems to have a different interior. Some people use it as a, a short form for DevOps engineer. Uh, some people are referring to the DevOps team. Some people say, no, 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 DevOps is a philosophy. It's not, not a particular tool. It's not a particular uh, role description. Uh, and so you end up with a lot of this sort of silly definition problem. Um, frankly, uh, I've never been a great fan of DevOps as a term. Uh, I mean, I understand where it comes from, but I, I've never been a big fan of it as a, a term. Um, primarily because I think that once the marketing people got hold of it, it was just ugh, a nightmare. The marketing people kind of screwed it all up. Uh, it started out, it's a bit like Agile, it started out as a, a, a good idea, uh, fairly well defined, uh, and then marketing people got hold of it, and it's just a complete dog's breakfast. It means all sorts of things to all sorts of different people. Um, you, you see a lot of bun fighting on forums about what it is and what it isn't, and gatekeepers will still say, oh, you know, it's not this, it's that. Um, and the net result is that you can waste an awful lot. On, you know, with this sort of stuff. Let's just um, let's just sort of skip all of that where we're at. Mm -hmm. not. Okay. Um, so I'm going to talk about two things. I'm going to talk about DevOps and DevOps engineer. Okay. And feel free to disagree with me, by the way, because you know, like I said, these things are all up in the air. So DevOps as a, as a term was coined in 2009. Uh, it was actually um, a conference presentation, at, uh, an O'Reilly conference, um, by two guys from Flickr. Uh, and they, they introduced the broad idea of, of DevOps. Um, you have to excuse me if I keep looking at a different screen because I've got the, the chat feed and things like that up in, in different ways. Um, yeah, so they introduced the idea of, of DevOps, um, and this was back, like I say, 2009. So it's been around for a while as a term. Uh, it wasn't a new idea by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, the, the idea of this idea of um, a continuous stream of uh, going from ideation through to a delivered value proposition, uh, which is kind of the core of the DevOps idea. Um, has been around for donkey years in other engineering, um, and uh, even in IT, if you go back to the original uh, setup with IT, DevOps wasn't even a distinction. Um, you know, developers worked and they they took care of all the care and feeding of of their systems. Uh, then we went through this kind of period in history where. Um, silos began to be developed and, and this was principally because of specializations yeah as as the as the systems became more complicated people specialized and then we got these silos and that's when you started to get the problem of people throwing stuff over the fence and that introduced all kinds of delays lots of fiefdom arguments among management where they uh and we have to take care of production development would say look we're only here to develop System. Once it reaches a certain maturity, we're going to throw it over the fence, and then it's an operations problem. And that was kind of what the DevOps movement uh, was trying to combat. Um, and of course, it's been exacerbated. But it's been it's been accelerated. Is probably the best word um, with the advent of web delivery. So a lot of and I would arguably most new items are now web-based in one way or another. Okay, so they're either they're either being delivered 
on um, proper intranet over um, and and uh, so although we've still got a massive amount of legacy IT system another topic um, yeah a lot of new stuff is all being based on the web um, some of the gatekeepers that we come across will actually argue that um, DevOps is cloud uh, which is another god awful term that people uh, and I would argue that that's wrong. Um, I think DevOps is applicable to IT systems. Um, okay, so I don't want to witch on too long about it, because like I said, everyone's got their own sort of definitions. But broadly speaking, it's the idea of taking something from an, uh, an idea, generally coming from a business, through to delivering that value proposition um, in an operational environment. And the idea is that you have this one continuous value stream. Uh, and that, in a nutshell, is DevOps. Now, I've said here it's often a cargo cult. What do I mean by that? Well, um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with the cult. Um, it, it's the idea of a kind of sympathetic magic where. Uh, I think it was, uh, the famous ones are the, the Melanesian Island, South Pacific. Uh, during the war, um, you know, soldiers arrived on these islands and they would build like a runway, control tower, and they'd put up radar dishes. And cargo planes would arrive and they would deliver all these manufactured goods and food and all sorts of things. And when the war was over and all the stuff left, uh, the islanders would uh, build build um, you know, runways and jetties for boats and they would build shacks or control towers, radar dishes and all this kind of stuff uh, in the hope that these planes would return. Um, in other words, they understood the form of what was needed for aeroplanes to deliver goods. They didn't understand the function. And I see the same thing happening in a, a lot of organizations where they set up a DevOps team and that's seen as being DevOps. Um, but the problem is they've understood the form. They haven't really understood the intention and the function of DevOps. And that causes a lot of problems. Uh, so yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna lay my I'm going to set my hat in the ring there and say that that is a, a very common problem. Uh, right. DevOps engineer. Okay, DevOps engineer is a job type, and unfortunately, it it it's not really one that has a very clear definition. Like most job titles, it kind of depends on your organisation. Um, it, it it's not even a necessarily a job title that you'll be familiar with. I see people say, oh, I want to be a DevOps. Um, or I've got this role as a junior DevOps. So they kind of drop engineer off. And there's no distinction between DevOps the discipline and DevOps the job role. Um, and all of this is okay. I mean, I don't, I don't have a problem with DevOps engineer as a job type. The problem is that, again, you get into all these bun fights where people will argue endlessly about who isn't a DevOps engineer is a DevOps engineer. Uh, when I announced that I was going to be doing DevOps for beginners, uh, quite a few people were downvoting the post. And I, I said, you know, why, why the negative feed? Um, and the answer was, oh, there's no such thing as a DevOps for beginners. It's like, well, no, I, don't, I don't understand that. I, but, and I was kind of puzzled by it for quite some time, um, and I couldn't I couldn't make out why it couldn't be you know. And I think what these people are saying is they define DevOps engineer as being someone with uh, a, a very broad range of experience who has you know been in IT for X number of years, whatever value of X meets their criteria. Uh, who knows about networking and knows about CI and knows, knows, you know, knows all of these 
there is discipline. And uh, therefore, you can't be a beginner unless you meet all of these criteria, in which case you can't be a beginner. And that's the only that's the only thing I can think of. It's the, only, it's the only way I can see that you could define away the idea. Now, the problem is these same people will say, what you need to do is forget about being a DevOps engineer and go away and you know, work in development for you know, n number of years. Uh, and, and then you know, you'll gradually pick up the other skills to get into DevOps. Like, well, haven't you just described be a beginner in DevOps? Isn't, you know, isn't that what it is? So I don't have much truck with this idea of you can't be a DevOps beginner. Um, of course you can. Uh, it's like anything else. I, I tell you what, the analogy I thought of while I was thinking about what I was going to say um, is a pile of sand. Uh, one grain of sand. We wouldn't think of that as a pile. Uh, so, but, you know, you put a whole load, a handful of sand, and you put it onto a desk and you put it in a heap. And say, oh, yeah, that's a pile of sand. The question is, between one grain of sand and you know, 100,000 grains of sand, when does it become a pile? And the answer is, whenever you decide that it's a pile. Uh, and it's a bit like that with, uh, are you a DevOps engineer? Well, yeah, you become a DevOps engineer when somebody says you're a DevOps engineer. Ah, philosophy of language. Mm -hmm. A long time ago for me. Right. Um, anyway, generally speaking, I've listed a few things that characteristics that I think most people would agree a development engineer is responsible for. Uh, continuous integration and continuous delivery pipeline. Uh, okay, that's a, a fairly common feature. Uh, so I've said maintain, develop, and maintain. The care and feeding of infrastructure. <laughs> Basically, you know, all the infrastructure code and all that kind of stuff, people tend to, oh yeah, that's all part of a dev engineer's role. Um, then you've got, uh, I've said, communicate and coordinate across the life cycle. And I think this, for me, is one of the key things. Um, a DevOps engineer, you, you really need to develop the skills to communicate with a lot of different domain experts. So you need to, uh, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what it is. You need to know enough about each of the individual topics on that um, DevOps roadmap. You need to know enough about programming, enough about net, enough about internet code, enough about containers, and all the various other topics. In order that you can at least talk intelligently to the people who are really deeply expert. Um, certainly, that was my experience. Um, so, yeah. Um, metrics collection and analysis. Uh, and when I say metrics, I mean also things like event log, logging, being able to dig into those and understand them sufficiently, diagnose and um, at least propose solutions uh, is certainly a skill that you're going to need to develop. And a broad knowledge. You notice I say broad, not necessarily deep. Um, uh, I, for example, uh, would not claim to be an expert in any of the topics. But I managed to make quite... <laughs> Yeah, quite a nice living uh, by being a generalist. Okay, so I know enough about networking and enough about programming, enough about deployment of systems, enough about operating systems, all the various topics. I know enough to be able to uh, analyze and resolve problems, but I don't necessarily know enough in any given field to say to myself oh yes i am definitely i'm an expert in networks because uh, i'm not if somebody said to me oh set up a set up a large-scale corporate network i'd be like i wouldn't even know where bloody 
you know it's not it's not what i do but if somebody gives me it and says we've got a problem uh, i could make a pretty good fist of di diagnosing it and figuring out what's wrong we'll come on to that oh, sorry kenny this is kenny by the way okay so this to me okay if there's one thing one thing you need to cultivate and i would say any idea cultivating but as a devops i think the one skill you have to cultivate is problem solving okay? and unfortunately this is something which i don't think most online material courses that people refer you to i don't think most people that most of those courses don't deal with the, the bit that I think is important, which is the ability to solve a problem. And I see this all the time on the forums where people say, oh, I've done you know 20 courses on Python and still can't write my own systems. It's like, well, sure, because the vast majority of courses that you look at, um, they teach you the mechanics. They teach you, okay, you know, now you press this button. Now you do this, and they'll run you through an example. If you, I thought the classic example is of writing a Flask app, deliver a website. Fantastic. But taking that knowledge and generalizing, okay, and then saying, okay, if somebody gives me a completely unique problem to solve using Python, can I do it? And the problem is, unless you've Unless you've cultivated the skill of generalizing and uh, being able to apply your knowledge in a completely unique situation, the answer will be not going to be. Able to. And that is what I want to sort of look at and develop training material and in these sessions to encourage you to look at. The problem that you're trying to solve and actually learn the skills to say right okay i'm in a completely new situation how do i go about attacking this how do i go about solving the problem how, you know uh, the first step for example uh, if somebody says to me okay we need to let's say somebody says look i need to uh what was it the day on Ready. Oh, it was it was it was somebody saying, um, yeah, I, I've got a. It was I've, I've got a load of yeah, uh, the outline. Was it was it a Docker? Can imagine. Mm. Sorry, I know this isn't Bring this across. Okay. So um there was a there was a thing on here. Now. But somebody had basically got a, a problem where they wanted to draw all the relationships between various bits and pieces in their system and of course the first thing i thought of was okay why don't you write your own program because they were saying has anybody got a way of doing this um now that I'll see you that while I'm looking at right. Uh, where were we? Uh, oh, no huh. this, uh, mm, turn the game down a little. Right. Okay. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I've, I've turned the game down on OBS. Let me see. 
sorry about that chaps um right uh yes where was i mm. low frequencies do you mean do you mean it's a bit high for you low frequency I can I can look at doing that for next time because I'd have to put equalize. Right, uh, it's it, it also could be something to do with the fact I'm using this shotgun rather than a broadcast. I'm afraid this was the only microphone I could find. What uh, note? Okay, I'm not really. Oh, this is from bookmarked it. Never mind. Anyway, yes, but the thing is that the, the first instinct I had uh, when I was when I was looking at this was, well, why don't you why don't you write your own why don't you write your own uh, program? Yeah, this is an ideal one of these mini projects people keep asking for. So. But of course, you know, you need to, to know the basic mechanics of it. But, the, but the, once you've got a problem, to, it really comes down to problem solving, translating that problem into something you can do. Mm. Yeah, I know about the being a bit closer. Um, the, the problem is, as <laughs> I've got, I, I can be closer, but that makes me booming because, of course, the microphone will then get the proximity effect um let's just go with it i'll i'll, I'll try and dig out my better microphone um for for next time uh because it's it suffers less from the proximity effect be more suitable for this um where was I? oh yes yes yeah problem solving um sorry yes so um so here we go these are these are sort of the the, the the real the real basic core skills uh identify the problem obviously requires the broad knowledge i was talking about and uh that also is necessary to figure out solution um then sometimes i often when i was doing this um it was often a fairly straightforward solution to the problem and i could probably i or the team i worked with would fix the problem there and then um but sometimes it was a question of liaison with domain experts particularly if it was a tricky problem like for example or there was a problem with the underlying infrastructure specialist knowledge um of, of whatever setup we we're delivering into um so yes, so and this is where the communication thing, being able to actually talk intelligently, main expert really helps. First of all, with your credibility, because um, people respond better if you actually sound like you know what you're talking about. Um, but more to the point, it means that you don't waste a lot of time faffing about. You know, go, look, I've identified this problem. I've I think this is the. Same. What do you think? Do we need to do anything different? Um, or I've identified these problems and I haven't got a bloody clue how to. Occasionally, it would be a question of, look, I think the problem is your area. I need you to take it because beyond my expertise to the problem. So, you know, all of this stuff goes on all of the time. You, you can't expect yourself. And, uh, and again, this is another thing I see from people talking about. Oh, I've got uh, imposter syndrome. I don't know how. And I say, oh, don't worry about it. Yeah, I, there's a hell of a lot. I mean, I was actually, I was actually looking at the um, uh, roadmap and sort of, you know, picking off the things that I do and the things that I cover and blah blah blah. It's amazing how much I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but it doesn't bother me because the skill that I accumulated over thirty years 
was being able to research and learn very quick new technology. The reason I can do that, could do that, is because I always, whenever I learn something, I always try to isolate the fundamental idea. And so, for example, if somebody says to me, oh, you know, uh, we're doing Docker. I say, well, hmm, okay, but really what you're doing is containers. Within that, what you're really doing is manipulating network filter tables and messing about with C groups and things like that. Um, so you, if you understand fundamentally what's going on underneath, you don't need to be an expert, as I said. Certainly not. Understand fundamentally, there is a mechanism underneath. When you hit a problem, it's much easier to figure out where it's likely to be going wrong. And so, if you, you know, if you've got a problem with not being able to get your Docker container, well, if you understand the way Docker networks, even superficially, you can kind of make a good. Uh, then you. Okay, well, I'm trying to I'm trying to access a different host. Okay, so, you know, have you got the routing and the between the two things you're trying to that all? So you can gradually pull away until you find the problem. So again, I've I've kind of gone a bit off track talking about, this, but you get the idea. Uh. Then plan and execute a solution in a controlled manner. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this one's a bit of a, an odd one. Yeah. When I say in a controlled manner, um, it's very easy, especially when you're new, uh, very easy to get panicked into JFDI. Just fucking do it. Um, and that is a really big mistake. It's also very easy pressured by people into compromising the systems that have been set up to protect you. Um, it's very difficult to offer counsel on combating because it depends on your organization. Um, I've worked in environments where it's been acceptable to say no. Been, I've also worked in environments, particularly when I was early on in my career, um, where I would have been terrified to tell you know, somebody serious um, that uh, to tell somebody in in a superior position that no, I wasn't going to do their bidding uh, and just fix the thing now. Uh, I needed to go through the formal process. Um, I think uh, as I got older and as I got more experience under my belt, it became easier. Um, but uh, again, it will depend very much on support of your organization okay um so what do i want to try and do ultimately i want to uh, obviously using uh, some fundamentals we, we we will always look at the nuts and bolts so you know maybe picking something from i i said that earlier, um just picking something from reddit and say, well, okay how would we go about um, and then working through fundamental mechanics of it. But I also want to teach the hard part. Now, I don't mean teach sort of difficult aspects, whatever. To, well, I mean teaching the bits that are often missing from online courses and teaching things like how to attack a problem, uh, how to investigate, how to find stuff. 
um, how to go about solving the problem. And I think that fundamentally they're quite difficult things to teach other than by actually having a dialogue and through it and sort of saying, okay, right. There's a guy called, um, he was a mathematician uh, called George Polya. And he had a, a great attitude to teaching out. But his attitude was better for students to discover than it is for a professor to teach. I think that's kind of fundamentally the difference between someone who will be a good IT DevOps and somebody who will merely be okay. That difference is the good people are kind of people who are willing to crowbar the floorboards up and figure out what willing to take on things themselves. Just accepting, you know, copy and paste from the internet, which I see a lot as well. Ah, the number of times you look at something and you think, yes, Oh, do you remember there was it? It was the uh, left pad incident. Left pad, stupid GitHub repository routine for left thing a string, and loads of people had actually used this directly in the organisation. They hadn't forked it or anything like that. Literally. Just Used it straight out, and then there's a bit of online drama. I took the whole thing offline, and it turned out that thousands of problems died on it. Suddenly, broke their bills overnight. You know, this thing. and you look at this thing and you think, it's so why that? Using that, and why the hell are you using a forked repository or level of yeah. hmm. The point being that um, you know, these people had literally worse than copy and paste. They literally just used the repository direct, um, which is mind-boggling. Don't do that, by the way. <laughs> ah, right. Um, constructive play. Yeah, I've always done this. When I was uh, when I was working, I, I, I always attitude that if I have any time at all to myself, and insubstantial over the course of my career, I would find something. Really Great play with um, to investigate a new way of doing something, new technology, no approach to programming, something that I was unfamiliar with, um, and I would I would then spend that time screwing around. I I would still try and produce something reasonably sensible, productive, but um, I didn't. didn't matter if I didn't achieve the goal. That's what I mean by control. Mm. And, and I'd like to do that on the stream as well, because I, I think it's it's just fun sometimes. Do stupid shit and, you know, poke it with a sharp stick as though. See what happens. Uh, this is another thing that bugs me on, on, online. People ask questions. You sort of, you look at it and you think, well, wait a minute, why don't you try it? Hmm? Uh, when you see, a, when you see a, an online that says something like, what happens if I, Y, Z? Do it. See what happens. Probably it's better to do it 
and figure it out than it is to put a question on uh, a forum. What happens again? What happens if I start my Docker instance in such and such a way? So well, just do it. <sighs> anyway, right. Okay, uh, that's the that's the boring bit. That's just the stuff that I'm gonna uh, witter on now. Uh, hopefully, it's kind of mm, more or less what I've. Got. Um, uh, it's really very opening, uh, and I'm kind of relying on feedback from you guys, uh, other than criticizing my microphone. <laughs> um, it's it's up to you guys what we do here. Um, you know what what subjects you want to cover, how deeply you want to go into the. You know what. Do. Uh, So, you know, getting something like an interactive session where literally we can just pick a question or you guys can get it and we'll just fire up a virtual machine and have at it. Uh, my only corollary to that, we, please, let's just stick to servers and Linux. I, I don't want to. Uh, I spent 30 years struggling with Microsoft Windows. I really don't. I'd rather stick with Linux server stuff. And I've, hopefully, most of us. Are. Right. So, with that in mind, uh, anybody got anything? Okay, does anybody have anything that they at point? Right? I've been wittering on for 40 minutes. Um, how many of you use uh, Vagrant? Uh, all the systems that junior DevOps use in their job. Well, that, that's, uh, as I said earlier, it's, it's kind of an open-ended issue um, because uh, it's worth, uh, I, I, I've actually put some stuff up on my website about setting up a, a lab um, for yourself using Vagrant and VirtualBox. Um, and that it's a good first step. I, 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 I saw somebody write, um, VMs are now considered legacy. You're looking at cloud, like AWS, Google. And, and which my response was, what the hell do they think AWS and Google are built for? They are just virtual machines. They're hosted on somebody else's equipment. It's all just virtual machines. So it's worth learning that. Uh, Vagrant and virtual together are a great way of learning the, the, the starting or learning about things like infrastructure code. They're a good way for locally messing around with network. Um, and it costs you nothing. Be free. You don't need to pay for cloud. You don't need to have AWS. I know you can get free stuff for all the cloud. But jumping straight into cloud is a bit like running before you can walk. Um, in. Um, you're much better off messing about with it locally. 
Docker Compose, exactly. And, but I would, uh, I would caveat that as well. Yes, we will look at Docker and we'll, we'll do Docker Compose. We'll look at the various orchestrations. Because this is another, oh, this drives me crazy. People go, oh, you should use Kubernetes. And it's like, well, yeah, okay, Kubernetes is cool and all that, but it's often a sledgehammer uh, that you're using to crack a very small nut. What you have to remember is most of the organizations you work for are not Netflix or Google or you know companies. And you know, Kubernetes is very cool, but if all you're doing is orchestrating a few dozen microservices, you, the complexity of setting up and and um, configuring your Kubernetes is probably more than it's worth doing. So, and, and again, I think this comes down part of your job is to identify correct technology to be used. And again, this will come with experience. You don't use, I, want, I wrote an article uh, for a magazine, like when that, in the first two or three years of my professional career, uh, it was a very proud moment to be, <laughs> to have my name <laughs> in a magazine. But all it was was a letter I wrote to an editor, basically saying, listen, um, the reason why everyone is employing C programmers, because that was language of choice at that but the reason why organizations are employing C programmers is because there are lots of C programmers around. Uh, and the reason there are lots of C programmers around is because every university course in the country teaches C. Yeah. And that makes us cheap. But it doesn't mean that C is the best programming to solve any particular problem. Um, but the problem is that once you it, it, it's the you know once you've got a hammer, everything becomes I also, yeah. once you learn Kubernetes and nothing else, everything becomes a Kubernetes problem. Once you learn by architect, learn anything else, everything becomes something. And it's ridiculous. It's just wrong. Uh, anyway, uh, it, 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 do, give Fagman a shot. Uh, mm. Docker, yes, we'll look at that. Git, I'll look at Git in some. Well, I'm actually writing a, uh, a course on the moment. Um, uh, Jenkins. <laughs> oh, you're going to get yourself in trouble talking about Jenkins. Uh, everyone, uh, again, we're talking about gatekeepers again. You now they go, oh, Jenkins, Jenkins is crap. It's not. Jenkins is perfectly. Uh, don't get me wrong. There are better options. But and I try to make this point to people. Look, if you go into an organization, I'm sorry, but most organizations still got legacy IT. You're going to go into an organization and they're going to be using Jenkins. Hmm? So it's no good then turning around to people in that organization and going, hmm, you should be using GitHub Action. Like, well, yeah, but everything's set up to use Jenkins. Hmm? So, You have to excuse my friend, but I do curse quite a lot now. Even quite. All right. Um, Kubernetes is, uh, like I said, we'll look at Kubernetes at some point. But again, kind of jumping ahead, I learned the basics. Learn what it for and what it does. Learning the mechanics of Kubernetes is. Here's the thing, right? If you learn, say, say you, you learn Python, right? and then somebody comes along and says, uh, oh, we want you to write a program in C or C sharp, another language of that. It's not that big a jump right, to go from one language to another like Now, having said that, that is if those languages are all of the same kind of form. Um, I, uh, 
I, I challenge anyone who says, oh, once you've learned one program, you've learned them all. Fine. Okay. You've learned Python, C Sharp, whatever. Okay. Now like, write me a prologue program. If you can write me a prologue program with problems, you, you only know functional slash programming or object oriented programming, you're a better man than I, Gunga Ding, because prologue is a nightmare. Uh, but it's for it's for solving different problems. Uh, one off, one off. Uh, tran Terraform, yeah, Terraform. I, I actually like most hashes. They, they do some good stuff. Um, so yes, Terraform. We'll do, we'll, we'll, uh, Ansible. Yeah, do you know what? Ansible's become very popular. I haven't really done much Ansible. Uh, I'm a salt. Uh, it, it doesn't get mentioned as much as things like Puppet and Chef and Ansible. Um, but I, I like salt. I, I'll go into the reasons why I'm salt. But I... Uh, uh, but we'll... we'll, we'll, we'll we can look at Ansible. The Nick server. Yeah. Yeah. Think yourself lucky. Can't tell you how frustrating it was managing up Microsoft servers. So nice to do Linux stuff. Engine Python. Good. Excellent. Uh, oh. Taking part in Hackathon. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> Rust. Rust is an interesting. Um, I, I quite like the philosophy of Rust. It, it's like C on steroids. Um, it's got lots of really interesting. I was reading an article about uh, about its um, the way it does uh, it, the way it garbage collection and memory management. <laughs> uh, well, there you go. You see, this is it. Get older, you read. Context, yeah, sure, absolutely. Uh, yes, I, I would agree. You probably do lack context, but then, it, it, you see, the, the problem is that experience is one of those things you can't learn. It just has to be experienced by definition. So I wouldn't beat yourself up too much about it. Um, you can certainly do a lot of stuff to accelerate that process, though. Um, and we'll talk some more about that. Uh, let's learn. Yeah, I'm right. Yeah. Now, this is something when everyone has a different learning style. Okay, so if I sit here and say to you, "Oh, what you should do," um, yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult. Um, like I said, I want to try and teach in a slightly different way to you would learn if you just watch videos. I want to kind of work through the problems, um, which is a different way of looking at the world. I like, for example, when I'm teaching um, Git, yeah, I don't say things like, okay, here's the way you use Git. In it, you do this, you do that. Which is what you'd normally get from standard course now don't get me wrong i do, i do have a chapter in the book that basically does that well i approach it from a different way i say things like um okay let's suppose that you've got a file and you want to keep a copy of that would you go about doing it? might do this and gradually by going through this process of saying well this is how i would how would you then look after more than one file? How would you go looking at directory? And then using Git to illustrate how to do that. Um, to me, that has more value than simply saying, use this command. Because uh, when you say to somebody, use this command, it's, it's, the, it's the old um, you know, teach a man to fish thing. Uh, what 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 courses that simply give you the answer are saying here take this fish um and i want to teach you to fish i want you to, to look at or every tool you use is the solution to a problem so why not say here's the problem 
Now let's work through getting to the solution. And in doing that, we will learn this. Helm, get used to it. Kubernetes is inevitable today. Uh, it, it might be inevitable in some circles, appropriately. That's a different statement. Assembler programming. Oh, man, those were the days. Uh, I cut my teeth on Z80 assembler back in 1980. Uh, and and I'm, I'm t in, in actual fact, uh, in truth, I cut my teeth in 1980 on machine code. In other words, we literally had a hexadecimal keypad and we would key in the hexadecimal code for each machine instruction. That's how old I am. Uh, assemblers, blimey, that was it, it was it was almost like discovering a compiler. You know? Yeah, we discovered assembler and we were like amazing. We write things that are symbolic. It, the computer translates it into all the decimal and binary digits and we need to actually And then and then a friend of mine said, Oh I've, I've got this thing basic compiler and I was like, What? And he showed me it. I thought, cheating. <laughs> That's like assembler for people who can't handle assembler. Um, I'm not entirely sure uh, that we'll be covering assembler. And the reason I say that is because, <laughs> and I, I see the, the smiley face, the, the reason we wouldn't cover it is because unless you're doing embedded systems, not much more for it. Um, they used to be that. Uh, I mean, it wasn't that long ago. Mid 90s, I was working on the compiler, Oral 60. And there were actually keywords in that. How do you do effectively put a block of assembler code in the middle of your program? Uh, and we used to use it quite a lot. Um, the machines we were working on, PDP 11s, and they were not particularly powerful machines. Uh, and one of the things was when when this Coral 60 compiler did things like multiply by two, it did it the long way around. Use the multiply operand assembly. So whenever we needed to multiply two, we would just do a left shift. Um, and so you had to put in a little bit of assembler code, force it to do. These were the top. Anyway. Uh, yeah, um, uh, yeah, uh, assembler programming might be very Um And like I said, if you're doing embedded systems, you, you're probably going to. But I don't think we'll have a. I mean, we might do a stream if you if you really want to. Um, it's my fault. Not nowadays. Eh? Much to learn. Yeah, you're quite right. Yeah, I was talking about learning style and I got distracted. Um I've always learned breadth first. What do I mean by that? Um go into uh, whenever I go into a topic uh, like uh, I mean Docker's a good example. Now admittedly I've already got a back some of the stuff. When I started looking at Docker, my first instinct was, what does it actually do? Uh, I mean, I, 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 you know, I can see the mechanics, I can see the commands that are there. What does it actually do? So I immediately lifted up the floorboards and looking, what is it doing to you know, my net, file, uh, net filter table when it sets up local networks? Um, what's, it do, what's it doing to with C groups? Uh, and then, of course, recently they changed the C group from C group one to C group two, uh, which caused all sorts of problems. In fact, I see people even now on the r slash Docker forum uh, getting all sorts of problems uh, because of this change, where they're using an old channel, uh, and Docker has now dropped. Sorry, we're going off technical. Um, 
Um, yes, I agree. L like I said, I tended to learn breadth first. So I would, I would sort of go, okay, I need to know a little bit about it. I'll learn that little bit of network. I won't learn the whole lot, that one bit. I need to know a little bit about memory. Okay, I'll look at that. I need to know a little bit about the way the Linux kernel deals with X, Y, Z. I'll learn that. Um, and I would, I would pick and choose the bits to learn to support the main thing I was trying to figure out. And that's the way I tend to. Um, so it, it was sort of an accumulation of you know, lots of little bits. And then every now and again, go off on one. And I would sort of, right, I'm going to you know, read every book I can network. All right. Okay. Uh, a lot of it, I get. Some of it, I wouldn't even bloody understand. But it doesn't matter. Enough of it would stick that I could have those conversations. Could, I could figure stuff out. I, I knew what should be. There you go. That's a good one. Um, and then, fan pages, info pages. Pick up. Oh, I tell you what, if you haven't already got one, uh, I would go and get a, an O'Reilly subscription and afford it. Uh, because I love O'Reilly. Uh, I've always had a uh, subscription to them. Um, and so much better, in my opinion, than hunting around on the network sometimes. Um, you can look around on the internet, all sorts of stuff that you forever. You know, but you can go to you can find half a dozen and flick through them and figure out. Uh, wow, that would be. Um, I, I, uh, I'm I'm working on a website. Um, it's slow work because I'm lazy. Um, but what I've started doing is putting together a series of books. Um, the one I'm working on at the moment is this one, DevOps from the technical support. And I'm just working through. And the way, the way I'm attacking this, like I said, I'm working through um, the... From a from a problem point of view, okay? so I'm saying, okay, well, I, I I want to set up a set of so eventually I'll be dealing with things like how do you how does single sign on work? Um, how do you set up multiple servers? No, I don't use Kubernetes on <laughs> because again, I'm I, I want to deal with the the, the kind of the lower levels. Yeah? Um, but yeah, uh, so that's something that you might want to keep on. Um, like I said, unfortunately, I'm I'm extremely lazy. But if you guys are interested, uh, I will put a bit more effort into speed up that. Process. But again, the idea is that you set up your own lab, and you can follow along what I'm doing, and then basically mess about with it, break it, and then perhaps come along to these streams and say this broke uh, where do i go now um but don't hold your breath um but but if enough people are saying to me we want the next bit what do we do and i i'll put a bit more effort the problem with being retired is that you tend to sit on your ass a lot and do anything yep mm. Yeah, that bit about fellow juniors in the audience encountering, absolutely. That's kind of like the essence. What I might do, uh, originally I was going to do something fairly simple with the um, thing that this DevOps course would set up. I had a brainwave thinking about courses, and that is to set up, um, uh, for want of a better description, a DevOps guild and set up a website, set of facilities on it so that you could 
skilled um, and become an apprentice and then encourage more advanced you to mentor junior people. And we would have the DevOps roadmap as a kind of learning tool. And you would be able to then advance from apprentice journeyman to by learning cross section skills from that tree. So you'd learn, you know, get from apprentice to journeyman, you would learn of programming, the basics of version control, basics of, you know, so you'd all your level one qualifications. I haven't worked out all of Get the agenda. Um, yeah, so anyway, that was, somebody's already mentioned the idea of setting up a uh, Discord server. I'm not a big fan of Discord. But I, I might do, I might set up. Some sort of logging and monitoring. Yeah. Um, yes, I agree. Or oh, uh, yeah, uh, it, you've got you've got you you sort of your basic logging. Okay, there are all sorts of things going on with that, um, and I'm glad you raised it. Um, so, okay, so there's logging and monitoring. Logging is a complex subject, right? Because there are kind of logs. You, as a, a a byproduct of of running operating. There are logs that you for application. And obviously, because we're in the DevOps space, we want the development to put stuff into the logs useful for diagnosis and analysis. Then you've got things like event tracking, which is useful for figuring out, you know, who's using it, how they're using it, and when things go pet, where it's going. Um, and logging can also be performance now, especially the be where things are getting held. Uh, then you've got monitoring, which is sort of related to logging, especially the event logging stuff. But it's also the sort of the basic one, things like resource monitoring. Uh, and so that's a whole bunch of stuff. And again, you can go from you can go from sort of the bare metal monitor um, all the way up very high level, much more. Um, it, it, what, one of the big things I'm uh, trying to get into all of these I'm writing is these core concepts. Again, if you learn core concepts and you then map everything you learn onto those core concepts, it's much easier. To remember and figure out. I've just realised we've gone. Uh, uh, no, the call. Oh, I say, yeah, I said I was going to do. Uh, yeah, sorry. Um. Yeah. So. Um, there was that. Yes, monitoring. Yes. So yes, absolutely. We'll, we'll cover some of that. Um, sorry, I was talking about core concepts. Yes, um, okay, you can see on here I've got these core concepts, and this is a real bugbearer. Um, these core concepts, you will see them come up time and time and time and time again whenever you're discussing stuff. Cohesion and coupling, which people often mistakenly think are just software ideas, not everything to do with infrastructure 
stuff to do with the social uh, setup, team structure, great book, team topologies. Um, and also, do um, abstraction, key idea. Okay? Kubernetes, for example, is just an abstraction. Docker is an abstraction. Just an abstraction over the top of other technology. Um, all your networking is layers of abstraction, or point of it. Again, being able to say, ah, yes, see that. That's a that's an abstraction. I understand that. Any. Um, again, I think it makes it a lot easier. If you've got these books to hang your knowledge on. Um, separation. Concern again, multiple applications. We talk about it in software a lot, but it also applies to infrastructure, infrastructure, all sorts. Um, scope, context, contingencies are favorable. Uh, it's, it, it's often my knee jerk reaction, to most people's comments on. Like, well, it depends. Contingent, it depends on depends on your budget, depends on your particular problems. Because he said contingency, entropy, sometimes called bit rotting. Um, everything degrades. Unless you put effort into fighting that, everything goes down. And software becomes crap unless you put effort in. I don't mean, uh, I don't just mean work a day. I mean deliberate, focused effort in fighting against the degradation. What agile refactoring is about. You have to make it a Deliberate, not a, of other development. Same thing applies. I don't see this being applied very often in things like infrastructure, but it is. It should be. Put deliberate effort into fighting against them. You will see inevitably any organization. Uh, and parsimony. That one I added. Just um, this is the idea of what I call only do what you always try to solve a problem in the simplest. Uh, this is the spirit of this is in the um, Yagni. You're not going to need it. The idea that when you're writing. Don't try and guess what you're going to need. Um, just, just do what is necessary right now. Um, I mean, there are corollaries, uh, not least of which corollary that sometimes you do have. To. Otherwise, you'll end up with a crap piece of design, but all others. Uh, anyway, what was it? Oh, yes. Um, yep, we've done that. Yeah. Actually, uh, DNS and Bind, I mean, they're a good topic because um, everyone thinks they know. But yeah, Re read that book and. <laughs> These are the kind of things where I think, I, I, I think to myself, I know about it. And then you find, God, much more complex. My favourite one is email. <laughs> if you want an example of something that on its face should be, but when you start lifting floorboards about the way our systems work, 
room for it. Um, there's a lot to be learned just by. And I don't mean, again, you can get off the solutions. And I've used them myself. Uh, you know, you can use things like red mail, which is a complete solution for everything. Um, there is empty. And it does all the accessible of virus all sorts of um but it's much more fun say yeah, I'm going to these component parts. I haven't I I haven't quite got to the point yet of being I'll write me up. Uh, <laughs> Um, but yeah, certainly setting up your own email server. But it's an interesting. Right. Okay, so we've got a few. Is there anything you want to talk about now? I mean, I see a list of topics. Other than me wittering on, oh, I tell you what, I tell you what, um, I did mention this very briefly. Doing this streaming is a bit one way. Stop, stop. Um, would anybody be interested in like doing it as a Zoom call? A bit, something a bit more interactive. I mean, I'm perfectly happy to sit or to take a topic. Okay. Uh, if I set up a, if I set up a, where actually, it might be an interesting one to do for the first. Because, like I said, this one really is just groundwork, but it might be an interesting. I think what I might do is I might set up a new website and you know rather than putting it on multivagrant.com website well, new website uh, probably based on the one that I'm going to set up going through this course um, Um, I'm, I'm going to set up a website, and what I'll do is I'll put up a link. Excuse me. Uh, well, I'm just going to the main name. Okay, I, I had the idea.
it's all right. What I'm doing is I'm I'm just gonna. Uh, Domain name. Hmm. Password. Not open. Wallets are open. Bothered. Uh, okay, I'll I'll do it. Um. Yeah. If I grab if I grab something like. Uh, DevOps can set up a web then I'll start setting up um, some pages with detail out these streams and um, put something to get hook into interact because they'd have to I think the interactive limited Certain number of members for two reasons. Uh, first of all, simple capacity call, uh, but also we keep it small enough that meaningful conversation, and we're not you know, we're not dealing with four hundred people asking. Right. Right. Well, um, if nobody's got anything but uh, right now, I'm going to start. Again. So if you <laughs> if you're not tired of me wittering on. Uh, then you can come back at 40 minutes. Like I said, if you've got something to talk about in 40 minutes or you want me to witter on about for 40 minutes, let me know. Covering it. I'll make a note of all these suggestions, but I'm not, I'm not just going to forget about them. Um, Yeah, I'll, I'll like I said, I've got a really, a really good mic out, uh, but it's hooked up in another room, doing some recording. I'll, I'll, I'll try and sort the sound. Uh, at the moment, yeah. Uh, um, if you, uh, if you watch my Twitter, I, I, as you can see, if you go there, um, salty vagrant Twitter. Um, I, I use it barely at all. But so what I'll do is I'll use it to announcement. Um, what I will do is uh, I will put up on on this website. Uh, I will put up uh, an article here. Um, will detail this stream. And the next stream. Okay. Uh, so uh, you can subscribe down here. The good old fashioned feed. Want to subscribe. Mm. Failing that, keep an eye out on that page. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a bit reluctant to keep posting to r slash DevOps. Um, uh, if you want, uh, I, I think if you, I think if you follow me on Reddit, if I post to my own page, 
uh, you'll see that. Um, and of course, you can always subscribe on Twitch. That will tell you when I've got live. May not be much help. Time. I will try to keep the schedule up. You look at the schedule page. As you can see, I'm not particularly. There is a, there is a schedule page somewhere. Some somebody clever can tell you where to. There we go. If you go to the Salty Vagrant page, um, you should be able to see my schedule, and it will it, it it'll tell you the next time I'm tweeting, streaming. Okay, guys. Right, uh, right. Okay. If any anybody got anything else they want to talk? Like I said, I'll I'll do what I can to sort out the. Um, Oh, actually, uh, one other thing. I know some people will already have left. Um, my email is on. I think it's on screen. Multivagrant at gmail dot com. Get to me. So yeah, if you've got any suggestions. Things you want to cover, or got a particular problem, um, or you see something online, send me the link, and and then next we'll want to attack process of learning. Start. I think we'll start fairly low level. But it depends what people want. Yeah, I will. I'll ch I'll check the I'll check the mic on the on the playback. Um, this is it, I really only have it when I'm um, like I said I'll, I'll dig out the good microphone. Uh, I need Windows. Yeah. Um, personally, I, I'm a Debian fan. Um, if you need a Linux distro just for messing up other stuff, I wouldn't bother still booting. Use VirtualBox um, and, and run it as a VM. You know, if you need something to play with, then you can screw around with it. Uh, depends what you need. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm a, I'm a Debian. I think it's. Lags behind a little bit the distributions, um, but it's pretty stable. And uh, and it's also sort of the basis for a lot of other distributions. So you, you don't get a lot of to put on. But the nice thing about Linux, of course. Yeah, Kali Linux is 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 also very good. Um, it, it, Kind of, or, or you want to look at penetration test or OSINT, um, mainly because of all the tools that are installed or are installed, pre installed. But like, it's like everything else with Linux. The great thing is you can take almost anything and build it out. Um, so, some people swear by Arch. Uh, I think if you're beginning with Linux, you don't go with Arch. 
only because Arch, first of all, uh, the basic install. Um, second, it tends to be very cutting edge. These packages fairly easy, in my opinion. Fairly easy to. So I would avoid it. Um, I used to want to. Now, um, I think it's a bit. I'm not as much. Yeah, um, Paul, I'm, I'm I'm aware of the audio issue. Um, I've tried to do a bit this end. Um, I, I think a lot of it is because I'm a shotgun rather than a, well, a proper mod. I've actually got a really good phone I use for doing audio with the videos. So I will dig that out. Yeah, no problem, Paul. Um, if you stick around, or if you come back at uh, eight o'clock UTC in a half an hour, I'm going to actually start again. So you you can see <laughs> you can see the whole thing. So uh, it's up to you. Uh, it's only a presentation layer for these streams going forward. Um, but you're more than welcome. I'm, I'm doing it twice this time. I may not do it twice in the future. Uh, I'm doing it twice this time because online, on the vote, kind of split between stock. Okay. Any any more questions? Comments, observations? If not, go and let the dog out so we can make himself comfortable for the next session. I shall probably also take Okay chaps. Thanks very much for your time. Um I will see you in half an hour. Prepare to return. Failing that. See you on the next stream, which various forums.